speak on topic growing global commodity trade in Dubai. Just to give you a brief introduction about the guest speaker, uh, Sanjeev Dattaji is uh, the executive director of commodity and financial services at DMCC as I said. He oversees DMCC's commodity vertical and directs the development, implementation and regulation of the organization financial products, platform and services. An expert on trade, finance and commodity market, Sanjeev is responsible for identifying new business opportunities for DMCC in, uh, and nurturing existing commercial partnerships. He was instrumental in establishing the DMCC Tea Center, DMCC Coffee Center and the award-winning DMCC Trade Flow platform and is tasked with enhancing the trade through Dubai of agri and soft precious metals and stones. A chartered accountant by profession, Sanjeev has over two decades of uh, multi-industry expertise in auditing financial controls, consulting, risk management, corporate governance and general management with both PwC and KPMG. So with your permission and round of applause, please it, uh, we request Sanjeev Datta sir to please come on stage. Uh, good afternoon. The previous uh, speaker was very interesting. I mean, the kind of things uh, she talked about, because there's a lot of things we talk about which are very obvious, but when it comes to topics such as sustainability, etiquette, not about trade, but what kind of trade and how you do trade, I think all of that becomes very important. And uh, I represent Dubai Multi Commodity Center, which is uh, uh, now the world's best free zone for the last five years. Our mandate is to grow trade out of Dubai, connect demand and supply. And why we are relevant to this exhibition for the last seven years that it's been in existence is predominantly because Dubai, without growing a single kilogram of tea, is the world's largest re-exporter of tea with up to a 60% market share. So the topic, again, is over the next 15 minutes or so, I'll talk about how we facilitate uh, global commodity trade through Dubai, because it's not only about tea, but interestingly, uh, Dubai is also known as the city of gold. It's the second largest a uh, rough diamond trading center in the world, soon to be number one. Together, gold and silver and precious metals and stones, we uh, do about $75, $80 billion worth trade. So that little fishing village, which is now one of the world's most exciting cities, has to do with etiquette, has to do with infrastructure, has to do with uh, robust regulatory framework, etc. That is the free zone uh, that we have built. So it's a very urban free zone. 200 hectares full of towers between 65, uh, for 35 and 45 floors in excess of 80 towers and only growing. We are home to 16,000 members, especially represented very well in the commodity sector. And in the agro space, we have uh, tea and coffee, which are the leading commodities that we handle. Now, typically, the tea center is a 24,000 square meter facility, which does everything but grow the leaf, blending, packing, uh, storage, repacking. When you say value addition, it's across not only black tea, but also specialty tea, specialty blending, pyramids, and the rest of it. And we've packed over 200 uh, brands of tea so far. And because we tasted success in tea, our next natural progression was coffee. So we built in February of this year, I think we built a coffee center, again, 24,000 square meters with up to uh, five to 10 million kilos of green bean storage capacity. We built that facility in less than 10 months. And today we are trying to connect markets, connect demand and supply. So wherever demand and supply are on either side of Dubai, whether it's east, west, north, south, and vice versa, we've always seen a very, very uh, key interest in using our facilities, especially because of the advantage of multi-origin blending for tea, and because you, know, you have access to 
tea and commodities from over 26 countries where you can blend and get your product ready in absolute record time. Talked about tea, so would like to focus more on coffee because you know clearly because of tea, we believe that there's an immense opportunity for coffee as well. When we talk about tea and coffee, it's not just about the physical infrastructure, but it's also about the ancillary uh, facilities such as trade finance. So we can also we are also home as government of Dubai to a trade finance platform, which is both Islamic Sharia compliant as well as uh, uh, the conventional trade finance platform. And there we believe that securitized lending will assume a very, very key role in emergence of commodity trading going forward. So it's a blockchain enabled platform. And we play the role of a neutral body which hosts the commodity suppliers, the financiers, the collateral managers, as well as uh, uh, any other interested party which is required to connect trade. Now, earlier, one of the key uh, hindrances that we faced is, you know, how do you finance a commodity which is sailing from one port to the other? So we tied up with Musk Trade Finance, and there we started using their ships as uh, the mobile warehouse. So you're completing the leg from crop to cup, whether it's tea, whether it's coffee. Now for coffee, uh, we have an exciting 10 months ahead of us where we are you know, very uh, accelerated in terms of our CapEx plan. So we would want to have every square meter of our facility dedicated to efficiency, not only about storage, but about value addition and different types of value addition in terms of bringing the most sophisticated value addition uh, procedures closer to home. We're also working with you know, the coffee board, the coffee growers in trying to ensure not only the element of sustainability, but also trying to ensure that you know, they can discover prices very well. So I just talked about trade finance, for example. Now in the trade finance uh, uh, area, uh, Narendra Modi and uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, they signed a bilateral trade treaty between uh, the United Arab Emirates and India. And we are working on a platform, which is a forwards platform, which will enable farmers discover better price for their commodities. Where, you know, the middlemen who are hoarding, now we have a huge problem, for example, in the onion space as we speak. So, that platform basically connects the buyer and the supplier, and a contract is conceived and conceptualized. And through drone technology, the buyer and the seller can show each other the progress of the transaction. So when you link that to our trade finance platform, then the banks are also very willing to finance those transactions. So in all of this, what do you achieve? You achieve... Uh, equal distribution of profits from the Mahajan to the farmer. When he or she earns the right bit of money, they are in a good position to repay their loans to the banks. So the qualitative aspect of you know the ability to repay, the reduction of bad loans written off at the state government level or the union, level, uh, union government level at times, and more importantly, farmer deaths suicide due to inability, due to helplessness, all of those we will take care of. And our platform is due to roll out third week of January uh, 2020. So as you will see, DMCC is not only about just building infrastructure, but ensuring we do things the right way. And that's been one of the reasons, you know, because of the robustness in our regulatory framework that we've succeeded in being uh, and reaching where we are in a short span of 17 years, of which I have been with them for 15. That's the tea center I've talked about. We do everything in the center. Please visit our website so you can get to see the videos of what the infrastructure is, what DMCC is, and uh, what it means to the industry. We host every couple of years the Global Dubai Tea Forum, 
which is very well received because it addresses all the issues of the industry as opposed to any particular part of the industry. And that's where the topics have gained a lot of predominance, a lot of interest, and people are willing to spend their time and effort in coming and visiting us. That's the coffee center which we inaugurated in January of this year. So we have a very simple mandate for tea and coffee. So we want to grow and place Dubai at the heart of the trade by adding value, of course. It's not in terms of deriving commercial value. Now, typically, if you're driving down not this expressway, this morning I took well over one hour to cross even the interchange. But typically, in a high-speed road, you know, when you build an interchange, it's a facilitator. In developed countries in the West, typically, a toll road would have a lot of interchanges to facilitate smooth flow of traffic. So the MCC, we believe, is like an interchange. It may not directly derive revenue, but in creating Dubai as a trading hub, it facilitates the other world-class infrastructure that city is proud to own, such as the ports, etc. Serving the market in a different way by connecting traders, growers, exporters with world-class infrastructure, obviously, and you can't do that without the best-in-class logistics services and operation excellence. Providing us, providing our members bespoke services. So we are not a third party packer, but we are more about trying to pack what our members need. So there is no one size fits all. It's very tailored and very custom built to, to the customer's requirement. And obviously, it contributes to Dubai's national diversification plan. So what does the coffee center like the tea center do? These are words we've all known. Roasting, blending, packing, labeling, tasting, both tea and coffee, training, that's the other bit. We want to be able to train baristas and give back to the industry. The normal alliances such as rainforest and certification alliances are all very much part of the way we do things or the ISO certification, those are all there. But those are nice, things to hang on walls, how do we put those into day-to-day -day practice is what we believe in enacting day in and day out. Storage, which is more uh, basic according to me, but as I mentioned earlier, what we try and do clearly is uh, try and maximize value for every square meter of infrastructure that we build. Because that means that we're not only maximizing value for ourselves, but for our members. Last but not the least, networking events. That's uh, how you can get in touch with us. But I'd also urge you uh, to visit the website. And if you want to grow your trade beyond the shores of India and connect to the wider world, much of the logic is used by some 500 members from China, over 2,500 members from India, and the world over. Our free zone is not about setting up a company, it's about setting up a company in a relevant zone. I do not come here as a salesperson, I'm a typical hardcore commodities and financial services guy. But if you want an address of choice where you connect with the business community, I think the MCC is not a bad choice. very much sir for sharing the insights